Hello and welcome to your mod spotlight on Extraplanetary Launchpads version 4.2.2. This mod essentially adds the ability to create and launch vessels without the need of the launch pad or the runway. Jumping straight into the VAB, you can see there are three resource containers and this mod adds three new resources, ore, metal, and rocket parts. Now, ore and metal are only added if you have Cathane. However, the mod author of Extraplanetary Launchpads does recommend you have Cathane installed, along with a couple other mods you can find on the forum page. Now, ore gets refined into metal, and metal into rocket parts by use of various other tools. You need these augers in order to drill up and obtain ore. You need to use smelteries to change the ore into metal, and then workshops to change the metal into rocket parts. This mod also adds two new items in the science tabs that you can scan for the ore. A small scanner here that will scan for ore at a decent distance and a much larger scanner here. To quickly demonstrate how the resource gathering works, you use your Cathane scan map to search for ore. You scan using one of the two new scanners added by the mod until you find a location. Once you've landed, you need to make sure you have augers equipped, these drills here, equipped so that you can mine ore. Now, these drills have one unique thing about them, and another reason why it's recommended to get Infernal Robotics. Even though you deploy them, they don't have an animation and they don't change their position, meaning I'm not actually collecting any ore even though that drill is active. What you're going to have to do is take the drill and stick it into the ground. In which case, now you can see I'm obtaining ore. So, either you can build these because the drill part does not clip with the ground. Either you can build them so that they land into the ground, or you can use other mods such as Infernal Robotics to maneuver the drill after you've landed so that it will stick into the ground. Once you've obtained some ore, as you can see I have 2500, you're going to need these. Smelteries. I have some tiny ones, although they come in three sizes. And all you have to do is activate the metal converter and it will slowly drain the ore you have and transfer it into metal. As you can see we're gaining metal at a slow rate but still pretty efficient. And these are also cathane converters so without the cathane mod you will not be able to convert this. As you can see we have all three active and we are slowly gaining our metal. And once you get metal you'll have to use some workshops to convert it into rocket parts. And once you've got your metal shipped to your vessel, you can use the construction workshop and activate the converter, in which case it will drain metal and create rocket parts. Now, I've set up this vessel to demonstrate what this mod does, the core of it. It's this. Now, this part is the real heart of extraplanetary launch pads, the orbital construction dock. There are three parts similar to it. The launch pad 2 and the runway are the other two. And when you show the UI, you get this. You get the mod and its version and what your status is. And you also get pad. Pad 0 is this. If I were to have a second one, then it would be labeled pad-1. And this just allows me to select which one I'm talking about on the space station. Now for this, I'm going to select VAB and select craft. Now this is going to give you a list of all of the different crafts you can load in from the VAB, including your own ones. So let's load in the test probe. This is something I made and saved it as a vessel. When you click load, it's going to tell you what you're crafting and what you need to make it. As you can see, I need 100% of the rocket parts for my resources, and that is 357 out of my 1300 that I'm carrying on the space station. Now, I can, of course, select a different one, for example, ion powered probe if I want and now it will tell me what's on there. Let's go back. Now you can also clear your selection if you don't want to build anything or change your mind about building it. You can also build anything from the space plane hangar or even any sub-assembly you have. Now let's click build. Now the option you got when you first loaded up your world with extra planetary launch pads was allow progressive builds. This is what it means. This is a progressive build. You have to give it time in order to construct the craft. If you said do not allow progressive builds, then it would automatically have constructed it and been ready. 
So, do note that this can be time accelerated, so let's just speed this up until we're done. Also, take note that it will stop your time acceleration if you are on the selected vessel that's building it. I didn't stop the time acceleration by myself, the mod did that. Now, finalize build. Now what this has done is this has gone ahead and put our probe right there on the orbital construction dock. Now we can tell what resources do we want to put in. Well, we want to fill it with electric charge, liquid fuel, and oxidizer. This button allows us to either put un uneven ratios of liquid fuel to oxidizer, or you can make it so that they are forced even. When you're done setting what resources you want, in this panel we'll work with all forms of resources, including modded resources like cathane or um, tack fuel, the life support. All different modded resources will work for this. And when you're done selecting what resources you want the vessel to carry, push release. You'll automatically switch to the new vessel, and you'll be able to control it. And just as if you were to launch it from the space center, you have it here. And now I can fly this in whichever direction I choose. And of course, you can launch larger vessels. This was just a small one that I chose. And I can just send that off to crash into the surface of Kerbin. Now, let's see what we can also do. Do note that the cost is from 0.24, and it doesn't affect you in sandbox games, and it's not what affects the build time. What affects the build time is how many rocket parts that has to go into it. So let's pick something else. A super heavy lander. Let's load this in. What does this need? This one needs 3,604 rocket parts. Let's build it. Now, the build time is completely dependent on the size of your station and how many kerbals you have. So while this is building, I'll go over that. Now if you've noticed, I have two of these blue workshops. Each of them contains 10 kerbals. If you see, I have 10 out of 10 kerbals sitting in them. Which means this entire vessel has 22 kerbals on it. And when I right click, you can see productivity, 21.38958 and the entire vessel has 44.339. The higher productivity number you have, the faster you can construct vessels. Productivity is affected by things like how many kerbals you have and how many workshops you have. So if I were to stick a third workshop on here, my productivity would go up. As you can see, each one has nearly 20, 22 productivity. If you do notice, this one has 22.8 whereas this one only has 21.3, even though they both contain 10 kerbals. The difference is the kerbals' attributes, their stupidity and courage. They actually affect how much the productivity the current vessel will have. So, as you can see, this one is 21.389. Let's take one of these kerbals out. How about Danfurt? We're just going to set him out and switch back to our vessel. If you look now, the productivity is only 19.4. It dropped nearly two points. So let's throw him back in. You can see it's back up to its normal. Now if we pick someone else, like Burbro, let's see what happens now. Now it's barely gone down, meaning our first Kerbal we ejected here from the workshop probably had a higher intellect level than the one we just did. Okay, so our super heavy lander has just finished construction. Let's finalize the build. Now, if you notice, we have a couple extra resources, and there it is, sitting on the launch piece. And we have a couple, or another option. We have monopropellant. Now, I don't think I actually need any monopropellant on this lander. So I am going to set it to zero, because I simply don't believe I'm going to need it and let's release it this time. Now if we look, this tank has no monopropellant in it because we told it that we didn't want any monopropellant on this vessel. We can do the same with electric charge or we could have done the same with liquid fuel and oxidizer. So we can turn on the engines and start going somewhere to land this. Oh wait, why aren't the engines activating? Can we not use them? No, your vessels will not automatically take on crew. As you can see, there's not enough crew, and since it has no probe body, we can't control it. What we would need to do 
is come back to our initial vessel, grab a crew member, say from one of these construction pods here, and fly him over to the new vessel in order for it to have command. And as you can see, since it is still sitting right in orbit next to it, it's not drifting away, it's very easy to send our Kerbal into the command seat and pilot our lander off. Now if you use probe bodies, of course you don't need to transfer crew. And even if you do have a crew capsule, as long as there's a probe body and you can control it, all will work out. And now we can just float this away. And this is essentially what all of them do. Now the launch pad is just a different look, but it does the exact same thing. Same with the runway. So another way of obtaining rocket parts in this mod is by use of the recycling bins. All you have to do is say activate recycler and then basically throw a ship into it. And which one we're going to use is this little metal transport we had. So we have our vessel hovering just outside range of the recycler and we're going to slowly drift it in to see what happens. Now, the recycler does have to be active for anything to work, so if you don't activate it beforehand, then that will not happen. You'll simply crash into it. But since we did have our recycler as active, as you can see, it consumed the entire vessel. Make sure not to leave these active, just so you don't accidentally destroy vessels you want to keep. So, now that we're done with it, we can set it to inactive. And we also received almost a thousand rocket parts from that vessel. Now let's take a look at another part that allows us to construct vessels outside of the VAB and space plane hangar, the runway. What this does is it has the exact same user interface, except currently we're at the pre-launch stage instead of orbiting, and we don't need that yet. What you need to do before you should try and create anything is open it. And what the runway is going to do is unfold. Now, your very first thought is that the runway is going to have your, if you spawn a plane, it's going to have it spawn in the middle and point outward. That would be wrong. The space plane will spawn with the cockpit starting in the middle, except it will be facing this direction. So, let's open up the UI and select our craft that I have for this. I have the auto plane selected. It's just a plane with a space probe and I'm going to tell it to build. Now, I do have a couple of workshops down below to make this faster, and I'm going to get this thing into the air using the Hooligan Labs airships, because I thought a flying aircraft carrier would be pretty cool. So I'll be back in a second when that plane is done. Okay, so our space plane is done being built, and we will finalize the build. Now, as I stated, it gets put on toward the side. Very odd placement, but we need to reduce the intake air so that we can actually make this. Now when you don't have the sufficient materials they appear yellow, in which case you just have to drop them down until they're in the green zone so that you can finalize it. If they're yellow then it will not allow you to build the vessel. So I'm just going to release and see if we can't get out of this trap due to the odd placement on the runway we were not able to get out of some of our structural pieces now I'll be back in a second to look at the launch pad and here is the launch pad too landed here on Minmus now it does have its own engine uniquely which you can fire to move it around it's also considered a workshop meaning it has its own productivity and it has its own command module meaning this part can do everything all by itself it even has a store for rocket parts. Now the first thing you're going to need to do is open it, which will play a neat animation just like the runway to unfold it and make it ready for launching vessels. And next, show UI, which is the same one we've seen previously, and we can select whatever craft that we need. Now I am just going to pick the test probe because it's lightweight and build. Now, because I have no Kerbals here, this is going to take a while to build, and I will be back in a second when it's done. Okay, so our probe has finished constructing, 
and you see we have a spawn height offset. This is the height that it will spawn off of the launch pad when we try to release it, meaning you can either set it to 10 meters or zero. I'm going to leave it at the default zero and finalize the build. Now of course we can tell what resources we want to transfer to it and that looks good to me, so release. So now we have our little probe here on the launch pad. We can turn on the engine and throttle up and fly off into the Minmus orbit. Just as a final helpful tip is try to avoid launching anything that utilizes the stabilizers simply because when you're not on the ground they don't know exactly where they should go and typically they cause huge collision problems. As you can see when I release my vessel they're still there and they are colliding with my station. That can be very detrimental if they impact any parts of the station because they will cause explosions and a lot of destruction. And also you'll notice that they have not left, meaning that they'll remain there and when you try to release them, they can potentially fly off in various directions. And as a final note, if you find yourself constructing something that you no longer want, you are able to pause it to consider or you can cancel it. Canceling it is not detrimental. It will not immediately destroy your build. However, it will start deconstructing it for a full refund. And if you accidentally clicked it, you can simply push restart and continue building where you left off. This brings us to the end of our mod spotlight on extraplanetary launch pads. I hope you found the information useful. I thank you all for watching. This is PTT GRW, signing out.